Please use the sharing tools found via the share button at the top or side of articles. Copying articles to share with others is a breach of FT.com tanks and copyright policy. Email licensing at FT.com to buy additional rights. Subscribers may share up to 10 or 20 articles per month using the gift article service. More information can be found at the Biden administration admitted that it would miss the U.S. president's target of vaccinating 70% of American adults by July 4, calling it an aspirational goal. Jeffrey Zients, White House COVID-19 response coordinator, said 70% of Americans aged over 30 had received at least one dose of a coronavirus vaccine. However, he said it would take a few extra weeks to reach Joe Biden's target of distributing at least one jab to 70% of all adults by July 4. Biden set the goal early last month, but the country's vaccine rollout has slowed after a blistering start as health officials struggle against vaccine hesitancy. We have succeeded beyond our highest expectations, Zint said at a press briefing on Tuesday. Instead of just small backyard gatherings, America is getting ready for a truly historic 4th of July with large celebrations planned across the country. Sixteen states and the District of Columbia have already hit the president's goal. Among U.S. adults aged 18 and older, 65 percent have received at least one vaccine dose, according to figures from the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. More than 150 meters Americans are fully vaccinated. After targeting older people and essential workers in the first wave of vaccinations, the focus has turned to vaccinating young adults, which seems said have felt like COVID-19 is not something that impacts them. He said the country has more work to do to encourage vaccine uptake among those aged 18 to 26. The Biden administration now expects that 70 percent of Americans aged 27 and older will be immunized by the end of the July 4th weekend, Zint said. Adding that Biden's second target of reaching 160 meters fully vaccinated adults would be met no later than mid-July. Please use the sharing tools found via the share button at the top or side of articles. Copying articles to share with others is a breach of FT.com tax and copyright policy. Email licensing at FT.com to buy additional rights. Subscribers may share up to 10 or 20 articles per month using the gift article service. More information can be found at State officials across the country have created innovative campaigns to encourage vaccine uptake such as offering free beer and guns, as well as million-dollar raffles. But the speed of the immunization program has faltered in the past few weeks. The need to inoculate holdouts has taken on fresh urgency as the Delta variant, which first emerged in India, spreads across the U.S. It has swept across the UK and been blamed for rising cases in other parts of the world. Anthony Fossey, head of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, warned about the threat of Delta to the US recovery and unvaccinated people, saying its transmissibility is unquestionably greater than the original strain of COVID-19 and the Alpha variant that was first detected in the UK. Australian doctors have reported a surge in the number of people cancelling their vaccine appointments, amid a new wave of caution over the AstraZeneca jab. It comes after the government updated guidance last week to recommend only those aged over 60 get the shot, due to the risk of a rare blood clotting syndrome. Under 60s have been advised to get the alternative Pfizer shot, of which there are limited supplies. Turning down any vaccine, and AstraZeneca is the world's most widely used one, may seem remarkable to other nations still battling rampant COVID. But Australia is one of the few nations where the virus has never truly taken hold. So for many locals, even amid new outbreaks in Sydney and Melbourne, the risk of catching COVID is seen as lower than developing a rare blood clot. COVID vaccines running out in poorer nations, WHO. COVID vaccines and rare clots, what do we know? Vaccine hesitancy has been an issue in Australia for months. But experts now fear the government's latest downgrade has hindered the nation's vaccination progress. All across the country people are cancelling appointments or asking about whether they should even have their second dose, says Dr. Karen Price, president of the Royal Australian College of General Practitioners. It has definitely put a big barrier on the vaccine rollout, she told the BBC. 
we're going to have to regroup and regain confidence in it, as it's really important to keep the vaccination program rolling out. We still have elderly people unvaccinated, and we're seeing community transmission again. What has Australia said about AstraZeneca's vaccine? Australia's vaccine program began in February, and is currently open to all aged over 40. But so far only 3% of adults have been vaccinated, while nearly 25% have received a first shot. Comparatively, it is far behind many other Western nations, partly due to citizens' vaccine hesitancy, but also due to the government's missteps in securing supplies. Until April, the government had relied upon AstraZeneca to be its main jab vaccinating the nation. Local labs were set up to churn out its production. Why Australia's vaccine hesitancy is worrying experts. What's gone wrong with Australia's vaccine rollout? The Australian millennials desperate for vaccines. But when reports emerged of the thrombosis and thrombocytopenia syndrome, a rare blood clotting occurrence linked to the vaccine, the government advised people under 50 to take a different vaccine. The catch was that Australia only had one other vaccine, the Pfizer shot, in significantly smaller quantities. The government has promised there will be enough supplies of Pfizer or other vaccines, like Modern and Novovax, by the final quarter of the year. But the decision by Australia's vaccine safety body last week to limit AstraZeneca's use even further, to those aged 50 to 59, pushed another 2 million people into the Pfizer-reliant group. It also raised concerns among Australians left with AstraZeneca as their only vaccine option. What is AstraZeneca's risk, and why are Australians fearful? Australia changed its advice last week because it found more clotting cases among those in their 50s, a risk of 2.7 clotting cases per 100,000 first doses. The risk is 3.1 cases per 100,000 doses for those under 50. But experts say that such a risk is still extremely low, and the decision to limit the vaccine is done in the context of Australia's low COVID cases. What could help in getting Australians vaccinated? Australia still heavily relies on the AstraZeneca jab for its vaccination program. It has pledged to get a first dose of any vaccine available to everyone by the end of the year. But given this latest hit to AstraZeneca's image, experts say it's crucial now that the government rolls out better public health messaging to achieve its goals. What we really need is an easy-to-understand national advert campaign, where the message doesn't necessarily come from authorities but people that other people can relate to says Dr. Price. GPs across the country have vented frustrations about the burden of having to be the main communicators about the vaccine. Typically, patients are still lobbing their first questions about AstraZeneca to GPs instead of going into clinics already informed, they say. We feel like we're having to be a little apologist for government policy, having to explain something where in the vast majority of cases people want something else, says Dr. Cameron. There's been a complete absence of effective public health messaging about the vaccine. The government has said an advertising campaign is in the works, but will not be rolled out until vaccine supply has been confirmed. Philippines President Duterte, you choose, COVID vaccine or I will have you jailed. President Rodrigo Duterte has threatened to jail people who refuse to be vaccinated against the coronavirus as the Philippines battles one of Asia's worst outbreaks. With a cumulative total of more than 1.3 million cases and 23,000 deaths. You choose, vaccine or I will have you jailed, Duttert said in a televised address on Monday following reports of low turnouts at several vaccination sites in the capital Manila. Duttert's remarks contradict those of his health officials, who have said that while people are being urged to receive the COVID-19 vaccine, it was voluntary. Don't get me wrong, there is a crisis in this country. Duttert said. I'm just exasperated by Filipinos not heeding the government. As of Sunday, Philippine authorities had fully vaccinated 2.1 million people, making slow progress towards the government's target of up to 70 million of the country's 110 million people. Dogs and humans live among the gravestones in Pasay Cemetery, Philippines, a photo essay. Read more. Duttert who has been criticized for his tough approach to containing the virus, also stood by his decision not to let schools reopen. In the same address, he took a swipe at the International Criminal Court.
After an ICC prosecutor had sought permission from the court for a full inquiry into the drug war killings in the Philippines, Duttert, who in March 2018 canceled the Philippines' membership of the ICC's founding treaty, repeated he would not cooperate with the inquiry, describing the ICC as bullshit. Why would I defend or face an accusation before white people? You must be crazy, Duttert said who after winning the presidency in 2016 unleashed an anti-narcotics campaign that has killed thousands. Human rights groups say authorities have summarily executed drug suspects, but Duttert maintained those who were killed violently resisted arrest. Sought for comment, ICC court spokesperson Fadi El Abdallah said, the court is an independent judicial institution, and does not comment on political statements. We have a small favor to ask. Millions are turning to The Guardian for open, independent, quality news every day, and readers in 180 countries around the world now support us financially. We believe everyone deserves access to information that's grounded in science and truth, and analysis rooted in authority and integrity. That's why we made a different choice, to keep our reporting open for all readers, regardless of where they live or what they can afford to pay. This means more people can be better informed, united, and inspired to take meaningful action. In these perilous times, a truth-seeking global news organization like The Guardian is essential. We have no shareholders or billionaire owner, meaning our journalism is free from commercial and political influence, this makes us different. When it's never been more important, our independence allows us to fearlessly investigate, challenge and expose those in power. Support the